of El Poblito and the Shared Table Food Pantry. Behind me are some beautiful wildflowers that are a bloom in Taos this time of year. And we use them for a recent celebration for Lucas and Shannon's baby shower. So we celebrate new life. But my question for us today is, how's your neck? Feel a little loose or kind of stiff. It seems that we humans have a tendency toward being stiff-necked. In the Bible, being stiff-necked is linked to being stubborn. While Moses was up on Mount Horeb with God receiving the Ten Commandments, the Israelite people became restless and talked Moses' brother Aaron into building a golden calf, breaking the second commandment that they would soon receive of making no idols. So we hear in Exodus 32, verses 7 to 14, The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once. Your people whom you have brought up out of the land of Egypt have acted perversely. They have been quick to turn aside from the way that I commanded them. They have cast for themselves an image of a calf and have worshipped it and sacrificed to it and said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, how stiff-necked they are. Now let me alone so that my wrath may burn hot against them and I may consume them. And out of you I will make a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord as God and said, O oh Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent that God brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce wrath, O oh God. Change your mind and do not bring disaster to your people. Remember, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, how you swore to them by your own self, saying to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have promised I will give to your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord changed his mind about the disaster that he had planned to bring on his people. We hear Moses interceding and God renewing his covenant with the people. Moses goes on to continue to lead the people. But throughout that time in the wilderness, the Israelite people continue to be stiff-necked and stubborn. Then, in the New Testament, we hear Stephen the first to be martyred, tell the religious leaders that you stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears, you are forever opposing the Holy Spirit, just as your ancestors used to do. It seems like being stiff-necked is a trend. 
Being stiff-necked people is not a compliment. I mean, some of the synonyms are being obstinate, stubborn, willful, rebellious, wayward, pig-headed, defiant, unruly. When the Lord promised judgment on Jerusalem, God said it was coming because in Jeremiah 19.15, the people were stiff-necked and would not listen to my words. Well, what are some of the marks of stiff-necked people? Well, some that I thought of are certainty that we're right, a refusal to listen to anyone else, defensive when criticized, making excuses for our shortcomings, prayer without repentance. Probably all of us have been stiff-necked at one time or another, and that can make it difficult for God to reach us. Because when our necks are stiff, they don't seem to have the flexibility to bend and bow our heads in prayer toward God. To open our ears to God's word. Now sometimes our necks are stiff because of whiplash trying to respond to all the choices in our lives. Moses, at the end of his life, offered the people just two choices, life or death. In Deuteronomy 30, beginning with verse 15, we hear Moses say, I have set before you today life and prosperity, death and adversity. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I am commanding you today by loving the Lord your God, walking in his ways, and observing his commandments, decrees, and ordinances, then you shall live and become numerous, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering. For they were preparing to enter the promised land. But Moses goes on to say, But if you turn your hearts away and you do not hear but are led astray to bow down to other gods and serve them. I declare to you today that you shall perish, that you shall not live long in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to enter. I call heaven and earth, Moses says, to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Choose life so that you and your descendants may live. I think one of the ways to have a healthy and loose neck is to make healthy choices. And perhaps that very first choice is to live with confidence in God. I like the Charlie Brown's comic strip and in one of those comic strips, Charlie Brown goes to Lucy for five cents worth of psychiatric advice to help him face up to his fears. Lucy begins by trying to pinpoint Charlie Brown's particular fear. So she says, perhaps you have hypogyphobia, the fear of responsibility. No, says Charlie Brown. Well then, says Lucy, perhaps you have allurophobia, the fear of cats. No, says Charlie Brown. Well, maybe you have climacophobia, the fear of staircases. No, no, says Charlie Brown. Exasperated, Lucy says, well, maybe you have pantophobia, the fear of everything. Yep, says Charlie Brown, that's the one. Well, bless Charlie Brown's heart. But the truth is, we all have moments of fear and anxiety. But we hear God say throughout the Bible, Fear not, I am with you. There are 365 fear nots in the Bible, one for every day of the year. And the point is clear. Because of God's love for us and presence with us, we can choose to live in confidence and without fear. 
The Candler School of Theology at Emory University is named in honor of Bishop Warren Candler. And it's said that when he was on his death, well, he's on his deathbed, Bishop Candler was asked if he was afraid of dying and if he was afraid of crossing over the river to the other side. And he gave this wonderful answer. No, I'm not afraid at all because my father owns the land on both sides of the river. That is confidence in God. I think the other thing, and there's more than two, but another thing that we can do to limber up our necks and to live more loosely is to choose to live in gratitude. A Methodist pastor by the name of James Moore tells a story of a beautiful spring Saturday afternoon when he and his wife June went to eat at a company barbecue. We took our plates out to eat at one of the picnic tables on the patio. And this lovely family came out, a mom, a dad, and their teenage son. They sat down right across from James Moore and his family. And James says they had this kind of really fascinating ritual. The dad held his fork in the air and said to his family, who eats better? And in unison, all three of them said, thank you, Lord, amen. So James Moore said, tell me about your blessing. What's the story behind that? The dad smiled and said, we got that from my wife's granddad. He was so grateful to God for every blessing. So at every meal, no matter what they had, it could have been turkey and dressing and all the trimmings or cold pork and beans out of a can or even just a bologna sandwich on stale bread, he would always do the same thing. He would hold up his fork in the air and say, who eats better? And we would all say, thank you, Lord, amen. And it was his way of saying thanks to his wife and thanks to his God. He always lived with the spirit of gratitude. So we try to do that too. I believe that because God loves us, we can choose life and we can choose to live in confidence that God is with us and we can choose to live with gratitude. I have one more story that I'd like to share. Alexander Solzhenitsyn tells of a moment when he was on the verge of giving up all hope as a prisoner in a Soviet camp. He was working 12 hours a day at hard labor. Alexander was existing on a starvation diet. He'd become gravely ill. The doctors were predicting his death. And frankly, he wrote, he didn't care whether he lived or died. One afternoon, he says, while shoveling sand under a blazing sun, he simply stopped working. Alexander did so knowing that the guards would beat him severely, perhaps even to death. He just didn't care anymore. He felt he just couldn't go on. But then he saw another prisoner, a fellow Christian moving toward him cautiously. And with his cane, the man drew a cross in the sand and then quickly erased it. And in that brief moment, Solzhenitsyn says, I felt all the hope of God flood through my soul. It gave me strength and courage to endure that difficult day and each day of imprisonment that followed. Alexander Solzhenitsyn was saved by the sign of the cross. The quick reminder of God's love and power gave him strength to hold on to. It can give us the same strength. And we have the same choices, life or death. I invite you, choose life. Because of God's love, because of God's grace, because of God's promise to be with us always. We can choose to live with confidence, to choose to live in gratitude, and to choose to live in Christ. I think when we do that, our necks will feel a whole lot better and bend a lot easier in prayer. 
Will you join me in prayer? O oh Lord, break down the stiff-necked spirit within us. Break us, soften us, renew us. Make us ready to live with confidence in gratitude and always in Christ. Today, I'm standing on a bridge over the Santa Barbara River in the Pecos Wilderness. That's the river noise you hear in the background. We are remembering on this day the tragic acts of 9-11-2001. And what a beautiful antidote to be out in nature. Lord, let us lift up all of those who served and saved, those who lost their lives, and those who continue to grieve. Grant comfort, grant strength. And now gather us into one as we say the prayer that Jesus taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thanks. Thanks for all the ways you support El Poblito and Shared Table. You can donate online at elpoblitoumc.org, or you're always welcome to drop a check off at the church. And now, let's sing along with Claire. Amen.